Act about their rights and duties and relevant and available remedies. And I know that that is something which this Council holds as one of its main aims. So much for judges. What of the executive? Well, lawyers do need to maintain a strict independence in their relationship with the government, while, if possible, maintaining good working relationships. In the UK, the Legal Services Act 2007 stipulates the independence of the bar as a regulatory objective. This may seem relatively easy in countries benefiting from a democracy and political stability, but we mustn't forget that it's far from easy in those countries where lawyers are put under real pressures or indeed persecuted, perhaps countries such as Zimbabwe. It is here where international solidarity between lawyers has an important role to play. For example, some 10 years ago, the Bar Human Rights Committee was established specifically to support lawyers who are threatened or impeded in their duty to represent their clients. And they have been active in trial observations and training courses which have helped many lawyers carry out their professional obligations under difficult <coughs> circumstances. As for the legislature, it is responsible for passing laws, but the Bar tries to assist where possible to encourage it to pass good laws. In the case of the Bar Council, we have a Law Reform Committee which develops and considers proposals for law reform and submits views to government. It's perhaps simply said, but to be effective and enforceable laws must be clear. They should be simple and simply expressed. Furthermore, laws that subscribe too much of the freedoms, economic and social, of law-abiding citizens are likely to fail in their aims. But the balance between freedom and law is a difficult one. Legal practitioners can play an important role, and their day-to-day -day contact with client gives them a particular insight to some of the challenges, particularly in these times of austerity, with legal aid, and legal aid budgets where they exist being slashed. The importance which the rule of law plays in the establishment and maintenance of a civil society was recognized by Lord Ashdown, the then UN High Representative for Bosnia-Herzegovina, in 2002 when he said, in hindsight, we should have put the establishment of the rule of law first, for everything else depends on it, a functioning economy, a fair and free political system, the development of a civil society, public confidence in the police and the courts. Part of the bar's responsibility as a role player in the creation and maintenance of a society which benefits from the rule of law is to defend human rights as an essential component of the rule of law. Returning to the relationship between the bar and the bench, both play and continue to play an important and at times difficult role in the aftermath of 9-11 to ensure that to the greatest extent possible, the rights of individuals accused of a terrorist-related offence are maintained. The International Commission of Jurists stated in 2004 that the odious nature of terrorist acts cannot serve as a basis or pretext for states to disregard their international obligations, in particular the protection of fundamental human rights. This must surely be right. In conclusion, I note that one of the many objectives of this, the International Council of Jurists, includes improving relations and cooperation amongst members of the bar, between the bar and the bench, between the bar and the public, and the bench and the public. I have no doubt that this conference has played a huge part in that. And on behalf of the Bar Council of England and Wales, I'm delighted that we have been able to support the Council of Jurists in this conference. Thank you. I'd now like to introduce Mr. Vijay Goel, General Secretary, United Kingdom Chapter, International Council of Jurists, to give a vote of thanks. Thank you, sir. I'd like to thank you, uh, Chief Guest, Right Honorable Lord Philip, Justice Mujambal Hussain, Chief Justice of Bangladesh, Mr. Vijay Jawaharlal Dada, a Member of Parliament. Mr. Kamraja, ICS officer, Justin Hassan, Jim Malo, and other dignitaries on the podium. 
Bar Council of England and Wales, the Chamber Five, the hotel people, the volunteer uh, media, Mr. Rao from media, and other guests and dignitaries who came all the way from various countries, including Middle East, Mid India, Africa, all over the world. And thank you very much for spending time today, whole day, listening patiently and uh, appreciating the views of various speakers around the thing. Thank you very much. I won't take much of your time. And I would request everyone to join for dinner. Thank you very much.
so I, I think it's fair to say that those who uh, not think it's not in my Yeah. 